This video was taken in the High Sierra Mountains in California. It's gorgeous wilderness country. There's great hiking and camping possibilities, but most trails are in the over 8,000 foot elevation range. So it was always kind of hard for me to carry a pack and camera equipment at this elevation. So I often went on horseback. The horses and the pack mules had to negotiate the sometimes steep and almost always rocky terrain. These rocks can be hard on their feet, so most of these animals wear metal horseshoes to protect their feet. Sometimes the horseshoes fail or wear out and must be changed in the wilderness. But there are no farriers, uh, no horseshoe experts, on call in the wilderness. So the cowboys, the packers, have to change the shoes themselves. This video shows one such event. We'll watch Tom, an experienced packer with the Rock Creek Pack Station out of Bishop, California. Tom does not want to get hurt, and there are no medical facilities within a day's ride of the camp. Tom ties the leg of the mule, so it's difficult for the animal to kick him. Tom is very patient and allows the animal to get familiar with its new situation. The mule's kick is strong enough to kill a man. Tom jumps out of the way when the mule decides to react. But then Tom returns and gently tries to get the mule's feet into a working position. Tom tries again and again and again. Eventually, the animal relaxes and allows Tom to work. Now, the so-called foot of a horse or mule is its hoof. The hoof is made of material like the human's fingernail. It grows with time, and it is made up mostly of dead material. There's no feeling in the hoof, just like there's no feeling in a human's fingernail. So the animal feels no pain as Tom does his work. I assume you've all seen a horseshoe. It's fastened to the hoof with nails. So when a horseshoe needs to be changed, the first thing you have to do is remove the nails and pry off the existing horseshoe from the hoof. The farrier or the person who puts on horseshoes, uses several different specialized tools, which you'll see being used here. Tom is using hoof nippers and a horseshoe puller. These are the same tools that have been used to shoe horses for hundreds of years. He also wears a shoeing apron, common with farriers. The farrier profession is very important to the health of an animal. An improperly fitted shoe can cause permanent lameness, basically ruining the animal for its purpose. The strange thing about being a farrier is you don't need any special training or apprenticeship to become a farrier. There are no state regulations no permit is required to practice this job. There's no governing body. So people who own horses must be very careful in selecting a farrier if their animal is to be ridden every day over abrasive terrain. After the shoe has been removed from the hoof, and after all the original nails have been removed from the hoof, Tom selects the correct sized shoe. Sometimes he has to modify it a bit to make it fit just right. In almost all cases, the hoof must be trimmed of excess material and the bottom surface made smooth. Farriers use a very special rasp for that purpose. I'd wanted to move my camera in closer so I could show you the action better, but Tom didn't want to risk my spooking the animal 
and asked me to stay back, quite a distance. Tom tests the size of the shoe against the hoof one more time, and then he's ready to attach the shoe to the hoof. There are several steps involved in fastening the new shoe on a hoof. Tom is very careful to place the shoe in the correct position on the bottom of the hoof. A farrier's nailing hammer is used to drive the nails through a hole in the horseshoe and up into the animal's hoof. He begins to hammer the nails through the holes in the shoe up into the hoof. Typically, the nails go clear through the hoof and stick out above the hoof exposed. I was surprised at how tough the hoofs are, that it took quite a bit of hammering to drive a nail clear through a hoof. Since the hoof is slanted, most of the time, the nails go through the entire hoof and then out the upper side. The sharp end of the nail is exposed. The farrier must trim the protruding part of the nail. The farrier's nippers are used for this. Tom drives some extra nails through the horseshoe up through the hoof. Again, he uses the farrier's nippers to trim most of the exposed end of the nail. There's a slight delay in the action because a packer is bringing her animals into the camp, passing in front of Tom. After using the nipper, there's still a small part of the nail still showing above the hoof. Tom uses another special tool to bend the remaining portion of the nail. The bending of the nail end is called clinching. The bending tool is called the farrier's nail clincher. The nail clincher is used to fold over the nail to make sure the horseshoe stays on the hoof. Clinching the nails is one of the final steps of shoeing an animal. Then Tom does a final hoof trimming using the farrier's rasp. The final rasping is primarily cosmetic. Then he returns his equipment, and the final step in Tom's case is to release the leg which has been held in the air by the rope sling. Tom has used knots which are easy to undo without having to spend a lot of time near the animal's hoof. A few hours later, 
Tom is back on the trail with his pack mule, which is now safely negotiating the rocks with a new shoe.